a cylinder and a piston used in the car engine is shown. Uh, remember we mentioned the other day, I think after the gas thermodynamics chapter, I say, your car engine, or you put petrol, some magic happens, suddenly the wheel can turn. How does that happen? That is a combination of thermodynamics, explosions, mini explosion in your engine, and a bit of physics as well, oscillation. So in your car engine, oh, it's a good, something needs to turn your wheel, right? So there's this piston, you know, the ideal gas, work done by gas, work done on gas, all those that apply here inside your engine. So there's four pistons, we call four cylinder. Lo. And there is mini explosion. Can I see my explosions? Oh, this one is very cute. See the fire come out? That's the mini explosion. Thanks to the petrol that you put inside the car. You pump petrol, pump gas, or pump fuel. So each cylinder has its own cycle of thermodynamics. I think it's uh, somewhere here. Let's look at one cylinder. So one side, you will put the petrol in. Uh, and then the piston is ready to go. It's waiting here already. The moment you push, fire, and you push out. Is that the beauty of it? Okay. So fuel come in while your piston is going down. And then the piston will compress the gas, do work on the gas. Explosion! The spark plug will light a fire. Get a small little spark. And here the gas is very compressed, so the gas is very hot ready to ignite to have an explosion so once there's explosion there'll be fire in your engine small fire very controlled remember i say fire play with fire is good if you can control it then the air will expand when there's an increase in energy and then all become gas finished burning now then push out the gas no? that's the whole process no? the next time you go sit in the car and you pump petrol and you step on the accelerator <laughs> Then you see the black smoke come out behind. Oh. Imagine all this at work. Oscillation, thermodynamics, expansion, contraction, explosion, internal energy. Throw everything together. And you get the engine. So we have a vertical motion. Assumed to be simple harmonic. Top surface is lowest position. So this is a piston that will go up, down, up, down. And there is a maths equation behind it. Your car engine got maths. Wow. Okay, D equals negative 4 cos 2, 2, 0. Set the distance between lowest and highest. Okay, how do we find that from our equation? Anyone got a suggestion? Ah? You want to find a distance between AB, the lowest, and the highest, CD. What's the distance? Just based on this equation. We need a value to put in. Hmm. Here's one tip. First tip. If this is the middle, time taken for cylinder to travel. Yeah, time taken, but they don't have give they don't give any time. You want a value. Here's a tip. If we draw this as an axis, equilibrium is the middle of a piston, and we have D against T, we can draw a cosine graph, a negative one, uh, so it's like this. Ah yeah. What is the amplitude here? This value here and this value here. We have to recognize that from our cosine equation. Wow, what is the amplitude of a cosine graph? So you're thinking, Miss, there's a 4 here. Correct, uh, this 4 is the amplitude. So there's a negative 4 here and there's a positive 4 here. And this is 0. So the total distance from lowest point to highest point is 8. The end. Just based on amplitude. Okay, remember pistons going up and down are 8cm long. Pistons are so big one. Eh? Actually, I don't know what's the actual size of pistons. You might want to go Google out some parts if you are interested. So anyway, here is 8.0cm. Remember, in the cosine, what is outside the cosine is the amplitude. So just note that. Okay, let's keep moving. Part 3 one later. Part 3 there got a lot of strange things happening. I will slow down there. Here I go faster. Yeah. Determine the number of oscillations made per second. Oscillations per second is also known as frequency because frequency unit is hertz ma, or per second. That's a unit of frequency. So you have to recognize this is the general pattern A cos omega t. 
So you want to find frequency is hiding inside the omega here. So then you will have omega is 220 from the equation itself. We extract out the information. Omega is 2 pi s, 220. So what's frequency? If I press calculator, now, now, 220, by 2 pi, 35. Ooh, 35. Okay, this part is still old stuff, so we slow, we go faster a bit. 35 hertz. Or the other unit of hertz is oscillations per second. So we just write here 35. So if you equate or you recognize that 220 in the equation is actually omega, that's 1. And if you get a final answer, that's 1. Last part. On figure 3.1, draw a line to represent the top surface of the piston where the piston is speed is maximum. So when it's moving the fastest. Okay, somebody let me know. When in the oscillation, where is the speed the fastest? Where is Vmax? How do we, what do we say? If I ask, where is Vmax? Zero displacement, also known as equilibrium position. Okay, let's go. Equilibrium position. In other words, this is like what we did in the pop quiz just now. This place, oh, this is where you have the steepest gradient. Or you can say where it crosses the axis for displacement. So we draw a line somewhere here, right in the middle. Uh, on actual exam paper, you have to measure and see where is the middle. So your piston would have moved up until this point. That is where it is moving the fastest. And it's going to hit the top. So yeah, graph cross x-axis or equilibrium position or gradient. Uh, you go and find whichever method you want to find. Then the next part is, okay, so there is the max speed. What is the max speed? This one also an old exercise. Then you write the whole thing out. Omega equals to a square minus x squared. Means we keep using this equation. There's only one equation to use. For maximum speed though, if x is zero, then this simplifies to omega a only. This whole thing is gone. Then you can take 220 times the amplitude, which is reading from here. Only 4.0. Now you might say this is 4.0 is in cm. Shouldn't we convert it to meters? Actually, not it. Because they want the answer in cm. 220 times 4, we get 880. Eight, wow! How fast is this? Ah? Your piston moving quite fast. Oh? I mean, I, I guess it depends on how fast your, your car is moving. But at this point, this is the oscillation. So this is going to be a1. If you substitute, uh, no, no, if you use the equation omega times a, either derive from the main one or you just memorize and write, that is one equation mark. Okay, this last part is where we come into a, we come into a weird place where it's a bit strange and it has this type of question has only come out once so we thought might as well look at it so engine of a car actually is not one piston uh, has several pistons or several cylinders in this case it's a three cylinder engine anyway what do we have here x is the same piston the same cylinder as before y and z are two more extra ones the pistons all of them have same frequency and oscillation Makes sense because you have to push together, but they are not in phase. Means all, they don't all go up together and come down together. They will actually lag behind each other, like the oscillator we saw just now, the two graph. In cylinder Y, the oscillations lead those by cylinder X by a phase angle of 120 degrees. What does that mean? So Piston is leading, uh, means this piston is faster a bit. See this Y? X is still down here only. Y uh, is faster by 120 degrees. So probably somewhere here. How do we know that? Uh? Oh, because piston go up, come down, is 360 degrees. Go up, reach the top, is 180. So cannot reach the top yet, uh, probably somewhere here, 120. 
Complete the diagram of cylinder Y for this instance by drawing a line to show the top surface of the piston, which I already did, kind of, but we need to draw exactly where the position and an arrow to show the direction of movement. It's faster. Ah. Haven't reached 100, 180 yet. 180 means you reach the top. So you start off at zero, go up, 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 180, then you turn down, 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 down. If you come back down to original position, there is a 360 phase angle. So I think you all got suggestion for up, probably up. Yes, up. But there's one thing uh, that we need to be careful here. In the actual exam paper, we need to actually measure, use our ruler measure, and write the exact, uh, draw at the exact position, how many cm up and down. But we cannot measure now uh, on the screen. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use the equation to help us out here. The previous equation, d negative 4 cos 220t, we know this, the whole length of the piston is 8 cm. Can we find the D for the second one? This negative 4 cos 220T is for the first one. Ah. So this one is D negative 4 cos 220T. For the second cylinder, if it is faster by phase angle of 120, you can create its own equation that look like this. You write it up there. This fella is faster a bit, oh. So we say D equals to negative 4 cos 220T. But you are faster a bit, so I plus 120 degrees. This is what we call a phase shift. You are faster by 120. So remember in, in uh, I guess if you take maths in P P1, if you have inside the cosine or a plus, some value, then the whole graph will shift to the left a bit. Let me write this down. So if you want to find what is the exact D at time zero, uh, at this instant, okay, we start timer at time zero. So this one will just become negative 4 cos 220 times 0 just becomes 120. This will give, what are, uh, negative 4 cos one, two, zero, two, plus two. So this piston, wherever it is, will be two cm above the equilibrium position. Ah. So here is two cm. So on the actual paper, you have to measure two cm and draw two cm. This one is four cm. Amplitude. So make sure you draw it at the correct position because they will check this. No questions so far? Okay, let's continue then. Uh, so we have cylinder Y and direction. Okay, done. Now there's a third one here. Cylinder Z. I will zoom out so we can see the whole thing. The oscillations of the piston lead those in piston and cylinder X by a phase angle of 240. Wow, even faster ahead. Complete the diagram. Draw a line to show where the piston is and draw an arrow to show where it is moving. So we have to do the same thing, but I need to remember, if you start this, this piston start here, it's zero degree. If you go up and come down, that is 360 phase angle. If you're up there, half the cycle is 180. So 240 should be somewhere here, 240. That means if Z is faster by than the first piston by about 240, should be somewhere here. Do you think it is going up or going down? Moving up or moving down for Z? What do you think? Oh, I cannot draw properly. Overshoot 180 already. Oh. Probably going down. So you think, ding, ding. Okay, you move, oscillate up, down, up, down. So if you guess downwards and draw arrow down, that's correct. Probably downwards. If you want to know exactly what the position is because you need to draw it, then we got to do another equation. So we do another equation for z, but this time, negative 4 cos 220t plus, it is faster, right? 
faster than the first one by 240 phase angle or phase difference. So we assume at time t0, uh, at the beginning, because everyone's at the beginning, everyone t0, then this, this, this whole thing is gone. So we have negative 4 cos 240. This would give us what position? Uh? Let me check. 24, 240. Uh, yeah. Two! Also two! Oh. So the distance will be 2 cm above equilibrium position. So it's literally the same position. 2 cm here. Above equilibrium. So it's the exact same position as y, but it is going down. It's even faster. Right? So you'll find it hard to imagine what is happening with the graphs. Why is there cosine and how are they relating? There, there is a refresher of this, okay? If you have a function, negative 4, 2, 2, 0 plus, don't know what here. If I increase this value, it will shift the graph, this whole graph to the left. I can't really see that the moving. Okay, let me, I will change this to 0 0.001. Can I see this one now? Also too fast. I yo one. Now there we go. Now it's too slow. All right. So that is what a phase shift means. You add something to the angle, means it will shift to the left. Become faster. You can play this with Desmos. So if you have three pistons, let's say X is this piston going up and down, up and down in time. You have piston Y which is a bit faster, so it's shifted to the left already because we plus 120. Then you have piston Z, even faster than the other two. Shift to the left even more. So if I want to scan my time or at every point in time, I can tell where my pistons are. For example, at this point in time, the orange piston is on top. This one is somewhere in between and my black piston is somewhere at equilibrium. So scan, you see them moving in time. And from here, you can find the velocity. If you know the position, I'll post this somewhere. You can play with this if you want to. I made this the other day. Yay. Okay, let's go back. So for piston in cylinder Y, this one, now we want to find the speed. How fast is it moving? Up for this fella. Mm, you could use the cosine and sine, or you could use the position dependent equation. I would recommend you use the position dependent equation because you don't have to differentiate trigo. After you differentiate wrong already, then your value wrong now. So better not if you're not sure of your differentiation in trigo. So you want to find how fast it's moving. We start off by writing the one and only V equals to omega A squared minus X squared. Good old friend. Omega, we read from the cosine is 220. Amplitude is Four. Oh, must convert to. Actually, no need. We are looking at cm, right? Ah, must be convert. So this is four cm minus. What's the displacement again for this fella? At this position, displacement is positive two. So I just write here two. This is the shortest and sweetest way to find this answer. Let's press calculator. Ah, huh? how fast is it moving? Two two zero four square. 2 square. 762.1. Okay, so we have 762.1. You can write 760 or 762. Also okay. One method is using this equation. You state the equation, you get one mark. Here, then final mark. Now, an alternative method that some of you may think of is to differentiate. <sighs> Can also, la, but you have to differentiate a lot of stuff there, a lot of problems. Because you have d negative 4 cos 2, 2, 0. Oh, forgot the, this thing. Then when you differentiate this, oh, you get velocity. La. Yes. But you have to make sure you know how to differentiate very carefully. This will be negative 4 times the angle here come out will be 2, 2, 0. 
Differential cos, I get negative sine. So, negative sine 2, 2, 0, t plus 1, 2, 0. So, you can use this method. I would not recommend it unless you are very confident with your differentiation and trigo. So, this is the alternative. Lah. Stick to this one. See, so easy, right? You plug in and find. But you need to know what to plug in and find. At the moment, what further questions do you all have for this? Quite interesting question, right? Oh, now this also can ask. E piston. By the way, if you are wondering, fun fact, uh, why, why do we bother to have these three out of phase pistons? Why must out of phase? This one is a 240. This one lead, this one by 240. This one is a faster by 120. Why, why, why not together push up, together push down there? That's mm, partially due to the design of the engine. What do you all think? This video is a pretty fun one to look at. So one possible design is, if you have two pistons, then they can go up and down together, or they alternate, there is a phase angle of 120, or 270, which means they are at a very weird phase angle. So it looks something like this. You can observe the difference. 360 means up and down together. 180, I go up, you go down. 270, got some funny lag happening. So that's the phase shift that we talked about just now. And that will de help determine their firing order. Maybe you say, Ayo, this one, the engine very, bum, 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 the tire cannot turn properly and not powerful enough. I want smoother performance. Okay, never mind. Then you put three pistons. No? And how you want to stagger them? This one, the firing interval is 240. Very similar to our question just now, where they are lagging behind each other uh, by 240 degrees. Degrees here means the position in the oscillation. Oh my god, three radio. So it's a little bit smoother, a little bit more powerful, because there are three mini pistons to smoothen the rotation of this wheel right here. Maybe you're very extra. I want to say I want four cylinder. Then there's many different methods to get this four to power. This one is double the power. Lah. These two go up, these two go down. Or there's many other angles you can choose. It really is up to the car designer. What kind of engine they want to design? What angle you want to choose for your piston to turn? Maybe you ultra extra, you like, wow, I want to do some fancy one like this. Some fire on top, some fire below. Okay, sure, go ahead. Interesting. You want five cylinders? I don't think there's a five cylinder here. Oh, there's a six cylinder though. Very extra, yeah. 120. So every piston is a bit lagging behind the other, but they all eventually push together. Six cylinder cars are what? Ah? I don't know. I'm not very familiar with the brands and what are inside there. Body Volvo, ah, really? Ah? Is that why some cars are way more expensive than others? Eight cylinders? Wow. This one, the face angle is 90 degrees. So a lot of them are lagging behind each other by 90.